In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters. And welcome to 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, where the Lord searches for us. Where the Lord never gets tired of us. Where the Lord wants to make us, clothe us anew, and fill us with his goodness. Are you ready for this? Let us in a moment of silence acknowledge the time that we have run away from God and ask him for forgiveness, pardon, and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most previous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
us grace. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord spoke to Moses, Go down now, because your people whom you brought out of Egypt have apostatized. They have been quick to leave the way I have marked out for them. They have made themselves a calf of molten metal, and they have worshipped it, and offered it sacrifice. Here is your God, Israel, they have cried, who brought you from the land of Egypt. I can see how headstrong these people are. Leave me now. My wrath shall blaze out against them and devour them. Of you, however, I will make a great nation. For Moses pleaded with the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your wrath blaze out against this people of yours, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt? with outstretched and mighty hand. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your servants, to whom by your own self you swore and made this promise. I will make your offspring as many as the stars of heaven, and all this land which I promised I will give to your descendants, and it shall be their heritage forever. So the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will leave this place and go to my Father. I will leave this place and go to my Father. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offense. O oh, wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. I will leave this place and go to my Father. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence or deprive me of your Holy Spirit. I will leave this place and go to my Father. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. My sacrifice is a contrite heart. A humbled, contrite heart you will not spurn. I will leave this place and go to my Father. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, and who judged me faithful enough to call me into his service, even though I used to be a blasphemer and did all I could to injure and discredit the faith. Mercy, however, was shown me because until I became a believer, I had been acting in ignorance and the grace of our Lord filled me with faith and with the love that is in Christ Jesus. Here is a saying that you can rely on and nobody should doubt that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I myself am the greatest of them. And if mercy has been shown to me, it is because Jesus Christ meant to make me the greatest evidence of his inexhaustible patience for all the other people who would later have to trust in him to come to eternal life. To the eternal King, the undying, invisible, and only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen.
Alléluia, Alléluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The tax collectors and the sinners were all seeking the company of Jesus. To hear what he had to say, and the Pharisees and the scribes complained. This man, they said, welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them: What man among you with a hundred sheep, losing one, would not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the missing one till he found it? And when he found it, would he not joyfully take it on his shoulders? And then, when he got home, called together his friends and neighbors. Rejoice with me, he would say. I have found my sheep that was lost. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one repentant sinner than over ninety-nine virtuous men who have no need of repentance. Or again, what woman would turn drachmas? Would not, if she, she lost one, light a lamp and sweep out the house and search thoroughly till she found it, and then, when she had found it, call together her friends and neighbors, rejoice with me. She would say, "I have found a drachma I lost." In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing among the angels of God over one repentant sinner. He also said, "A man had two sons. The younger said to his father, 'Father, let me have the share of the estate that would come to me.' So the father divided the property between them. A few days later, the younger son got together everything he had and left for a distant country, where he squandered his money on a life of debauchery. When he had spent it all," That country experienced a severe famine, and now he began to feel the pinch. So he hired himself out to one of the local inhabitants, who put him on his farm to feed the pigs. And he would willingly have filled his belly with the husk the pigs were eating, but no one offered him anything. Then he came to his senses and said. How many of my father's paid servants have more food than they want, and here am I dying of hunger? I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your paid servants. So he left the place and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity. 
He ran to the boy, clasped him in his arms, and kissed him tenderly. Then his son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the calf we have been fattening and kill it. We are going to have a feast, a celebration. Because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now the other son was out in the fields, and on his way back, as he drew near the house, he could hear music and dancing. Calling one of the servants, he asked what it was all about. Your brother has come, replied the servant, and your father has killed the calf we had fattened because he has got him back safe and sound. He was angry then and refused to go in. And his father came out to plead with him, but he answered his father, Look, all these years I have slaved for you, and never once disobeyed your orders. Yet you never offered me so much as a kid for me to celebrate with my friends. But for this son of yours, when he comes back after swallowing up your property, he and his woman, you kill the calf we had been fattening, the father said, My son, you are with me always, and all I have is yours. But it was only right we should celebrate and rejoice, because your brother here was dead and has come to life. He was lost and is found. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. But now I see I once was lost But now I'm found Was blind But now I see my brothers and sisters in Christ, grace has found us. We are all here by the grace of God. It is nothing of our strength, our beauty, our wealth, and our work, and anything. It's by the sheer grace of God. And this grace, we must always be thankful. We must always show gratitude. We must always thank God for the gift of our being and for all that we have. I planned something to preach on, but something was just pushing me to share something different. And I guess that is what God wants you to hear and to listen. The first thing, my dear brothers and sisters, is that we must not be forgetful about God because God does not forget us. We must never be forgetful about God because God does not forget us. In the first reading of today, God saved the Israelites. God led them through the desert. Snakes were biting them, but God saved them. They were hungry. God gave them food. They were thirsty. God gave them water to drink. They were dying, but God restored them. They lost their way, but God directed and guided them. And he brought them to a place of rest and relief, a place of happiness and peace, a place of plenty and graciousness. But look at what the Israelites do. On this place, Moses had gone to have a conversation with God, to seek the face of God. 
And as Moses was seeking the face of God, his people, his brothers and sisters, his fellow Israelites had forgotten about God. They had taken out their rings, their gold, and had molded, no, molded an image to worship. And you know what it said to the image? The reading said, this is our God. This is the one who brought us from the land of Egypt. This is the God who saved us. The gold, the rings, the wealth, that's what saved them. How did they forget about God? And now they are making an image as their God and bowing to that image and said, you are the ones that you brought us. How forgetful were the Israelites. And how forgetful are we, dear people of God. Because there are times in our life we also forget about God. We do not acknowledge what God is doing in our lives. Sometimes we take lightly the fact that we've gone to sleep and have come back to life. We think it is normal. It is not normal. You don't have power over your life. God has power over our lives. And so if you go to sleep and wake up in the morning to see the light of the day, be thankful. Show appreciation to God and never forget God because he never forgets you. So that is what the Israelites did. That is what we sometimes do in our own life. Sometimes in the course of the day, we forget that there is God. Sometimes in the course of the day, we do things as if there is no power beyond the things of this world. But remember, there is God. His power surpasses every other power. He sees the things happening in this world. He sees everything. But what this God, what, what is so surprising about this God is that no matter what we do to him, how we run away from him, he still loves us. And he never wants to abandon us. He never wants to forget. He never gets tired of us. But brothers and sisters, although God never gets tired of us, we get tired of God. And sometimes we feel, ah, oh, as for today, I'm not going to church. As for today, I'm tired of praying. I'm not going to pray. As for today, I have my food. Let me eat. Mm -mm 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 -mm. No prayer. No thanksgiving to God for the provision of that food. Today, remember that as God never forgets about you, you should also never forget about God. Because forgetfulness about God makes us lack the blessings, the graces, and the protection of God. And that is why in the first reading, when Moses was speaking to God, God revealed his plan to Moses, but the Israelites did not have any idea. And when God revealed his plan to Moses because he was drawing closer to him, God said, I'm going to devour them. I'm going to destroy them. I'm going to wipe them from the surface of this earth. But through the intercession of Moses, God saved them. So the first point I want us all to remember is that never in your life, never in each day, forget about God. Show your gratitude to God and thank him for the gift of that day. The second point, my dear brothers and sisters, is the power of intercession, which I've just mentioned a bit about Moses. You see, sometimes we who know God, we who come here to church, we who pray our rosaries, we who read the Bible must always remember that we have a responsibility towards our fellow brothers and sisters. Those who have gone away from the presence of God, those who, have, who are doing all kinds of things in the world, committing evil and crimes in our world, we as Christians, we who draw closer to God, have a responsibility to intercede for them. We don't have to be happy when people are suffering. We don't have to be happy when people are going through trials and difficulties. We don't have to be happy when people are in pain because we say it serves them well. No. Listen to what God said to Moses. As for you, Moses, I will spare you because I see your face and you draw close to me. But as for your people, I will devour them. But listen, Moses came to God. He said, Moses spoke to God and said, Oh God, remember your promises. Your promises to Abraham, to Jacob, to Isaac, and to all the patriarchs, and spare your people. That is a man of faith. A man who believes in God. A man who believes in restoration. For Moses, 
No single person is beyond repairs. And that is what we have to also recognize in our own life. There's no one single person here who is beyond repairs. No matter how bad that person is, God can change that person. No matter how bad that person is, through our prayers, God can change that person. No matter how far we've gone, God can still do something in our life through our own intercession. So, dear brothers and sisters, let us not stop praying for other people. Let us not stop being compassionate to other people. Let us not stop being merciful to people. Because through our intercession, through our com- compassion and grace, others may also be restored unto God. And that is our Christian responsibility. So never be happy because somebody is going through some trials, but rather pray to God that God will change the person's situation. And if you do that, not only is the person's life going to change, your life and the grace of God will overflow in your life. So remember the second point, you have the responsibility to intercede for other people. The people committing crimes in our country, the people kidnapping people, the people stealing our properties, the people insulting us on the road, the people doing all of that, all of this, let us pray for them. Let us not seek their punishment and their downfall because we are people of God. The third point, my dear brothers and sisters, is that always cherish who you are. Cherish your dignity in God and be content with what God is doing in your life and what God is going to do in your life. The parable in the gospel of today, we heard about three parables. Now let me focus on the final parable, the parable of the lost son, which we call the prodigal son, isn't it? What is happening here? The first son, the younger son said, Father, give me the property that belongs to me. When you die, the ones you give, give it to me now. You know what is wrong with, with, with this? The child, the younger son, had a share of the property, right? So... He had every whatever to request for it, but the, 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 that which has gone wrong with this conversation is that he is treating his father as if his father were dead. Already though the father is alive, he's considering the father as, you are dead. So let me have my property. So in a sense, he's not respecting even the father's authority. He's not recognizing that he is the father and he is the son. And he's not recognizing the fact that in the house, he's getting all that he needed. All that he thought about was himself and the things he would do with other people just to destroy their life. And so he leaves the house. The father, well, grants him his wish. Well, if you are treating me as the dead person, you want this, I'll give it to you. Use it the way you want it. And so he said he went and spent it with women in the life of the budget, drinking and, you know, you can imagine all of that. But then it got to a point. He said he squandered all the property and he didn't even have anything to eat. And what did he long for? He longed to be a person who cares for pigs. Listen, for a Jew, to even have that thought of going to feed the pig tells you of the dignity of how far that person had gone. Jews would never have anything to do with pigs. You remember Jesus' healing when he sent the demons into the pigs, right? And then they went into the river and were distressed. So because of that, Jews never have anything to do with pigs. Because they think that in the pigs there is still demonic in our possessions. But how can now a Jew say that I'm going to feed pigs? And it is not only about feeding the pigs. He said he wanted to eat the very food that the pigs were eating. It tells of how low this person had gone to. He had lost his dignity. He had lost self-respect. He had lost everything he could ever think of. And so that is why he said, the word said, he came to his senses. He said, ah. Is this me, Francis Ward? Eating, I'm not going to mention anything there. No, this is not my state. This is not my dignity. I must rise. But even the slaves in my father's house have something to eat and more than anything. So I will rise up from this place and go 
to my father. That is why the responsorial psalm says, what did he say? I'll leave this place and go back to my father. Because he had recognized that in the father's house, there are many blessings and many graciousness. Realizing your dignity and appreciating what you have. Sometimes in life, we do not appreciate what we have until something happens. I've always told some of these young people here that, listen, there are a lot of things you guys are experiencing. There are a lot of things that you guys have that your other brothers and sisters do not have. You have a phone to use, and now you move from iPhone 11, Mom, I want iPhone 20. And if your mom does not get you that, you have a problem with your mom. You have console, is that how you call it? Yeah, with that. And you want always, every year or even every month, to upgrade it to something else. You have water to drink. You don't acknowledge that. There are some of your colleagues somewhere there, you know the water they drink? They go to the river, to the streams, where pigs, animals, put their feces in, they throw rubbish. Those are the waters they go to fetch. And they come to cook it, to boil it, for it to, uh, you know, settle, and then that's where they can drink. But you've got water flowing here each day, every time, and we waste it, really. Yet, we don't acknowledge and appreciate what we have. We have lights on each and every day. I went to Ghana, and I was just there, like about five hours, there was power cut. I wanted to iron, and then there was no light, right? And I thought, oh, this is quite different. I've come back. <laughs> Because in London, I've never experienced that. If the light goes so quickly, it comes back, isn't it? That means there's a problem. But we've got to acknowledge and appreciate that. So all that I'm saying, my dear brothers and sisters, appreciate what you have. And be thankful to God. Appreciate your dignity and all that you have with your parent. Because listen, sometimes we don't respect our parents. We don't, we don't, we don't cherish them while they are with us. When they die, you will know you experience something different. While they are with you, Cherish their presence. Let them be happy. Say words of peace to them. And stop disrespecting them, dear young people. And parents, whilst you have your children with you, cherish them. Because a day will come, they will not be with you. And you also miss them. Let us cherish each other whilst we have life. Cherish each other whilst we are in each other's presence. And that is what actually the elder son also did. So the, though the younger son did not cherish what, later he realized that, oh, it is good to be in my father's house. But again, we have an elder son who has gone out and also had come in and said, what is happening? Oh, your brother has come. He was dead and is now he's alive. He was lost and is found. And the brother also got what? Angry. He said, ah, I have been with you all these years and never have I disobeyed you. But you have never killed a fattened cow for me to eat with my friend. And what did the, the father say? My son, you have been with me all these years. All that I have is yours. What is it all about? You are with me. You have never been homeless. Your brother was homeless. Cherish the fact that you have never been homeless. You have been with me, you have never been hungry. Your brother, when he left, was hungry. You have been with me, you've never gone through pain and suffering. But your brother had gone through pain and suffering. You are still alive, so you should appreciate your being. Dear brothers, dear parents, dear sisters, let us all cherish who we are, what we have. And what God does in our lives each day. And through this cherishing of what we are, showing gratitude to God, and never forgetting who God is in our life, we'd always experience God's grace, God's favors, God's blessings. Today, remember never to forget about God, because God never forgets you. Today, remember, seek and search for God, and you find him. Today, remember, appreciate and cherish all that you have and give glory to God. And be an intercessor. Pray for those who are going through distress, pain, 
problems, sufferings, and all those who have left the church, that they will come back to their Father and experience the bountiful grace of God. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord strengthen us. And may the Lord grant us what we long for each day of our lives. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now come before the Heavenly Father, who, while we are still long way off, anticipates our needs and is moved with compassion. For Pope Francis, Bishop Alan, and all bishops and priests, that they may faithfully preach the good news of God's mercy, and offer the sacrament of reconciliation with tenderness. Lord, in your mercy. For any in our church whose attendance has lapsed, that they may return to Mass and experience it as a homecoming. Lord, in your mercy. For all our sick, that they may be comforted with the care of the doctors, nurses, and families. Lord, in your mercy. For the repose of the soul of Queen Elizabeth II, that she will be rewarded with the fullness of God's love as a reward for her care for her people in our country and all over the world. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. We are praying. For the royal family, we pray especially for King Charles III, that they will continue following the example of their mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother in leading us all closer to Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. For all who have died, and all whose anniversaries occur this week. May they be welcomed in God's kingdom. Especially for Luceria Butters, from whom we offer the smiles. Lord, in your mercy. We ask Mary, our mother, to join with us in our prayers as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst children, and blessed is the fruit of thy own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. In silence, let us place before the Lord 
all the petitions that we carry in our hearts. Pray for God's intervention in your life. For that one thing that you want God to do in your life this week. For that one person who has asked you to pray for. For your children, your parents, your parishioners. Father in heaven, we trust that you are with us always and that all you have is ours. Graciously hear the prayers of your sons and daughters this afternoon and grant unto us what we ask in accordance with your will. We ask all of these through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God the Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and now lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live, we move, and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effect of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending thy your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, a spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Oh, him and with him and in him, O oh, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us, and lead us out. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, especially throughout this week. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May you please be seated for a brief moment as we listen to Canon Bob. On the front page of your newsletters, there's the program for the visitation to the Diocese of the Relics of St. Bernadette of Lourdes. They arrive at the Cathedral on the 16th of October at 11 o'clock. At 11.30, there will be a celebrated Mass by Bishop Allen. And then at 6.30 in the evening, there will be another Mass led by the Diocesan Youth Service. You'll be able to see the relics between or after the 11.30 Mass and up to 6 o'clock on Sunday, and then from probably eight, 7 o'clock or 7.30 to 9 o'clock in the evening. And then the cathedral closes. It opens again on Monday at 6 o'clock in the morning, and you can go along then to visit the cathedral, and after the 9.15 Mass till 12 noon. At 12 noon, the relics will leave the cathedral, and they will arrive at Our Lady of Lourdes Monstead on Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. Between 11 and 3 on Tuesday, the time for visiting the, the, the relics will be for school children. They will have that time between 11 and 3. And then from 3 to 7.30, you're able to go into Our Lady of Lourdes Wanstead. And after the evening Mass, uh, which Bishop Allen will be saying, you can also go to the church until midnight. And then on Wednesday morning at 6 o'clock, the church will open again, and you can visit the relics, but they will be leaving the, the church at 9 o'clock on Wednesday morning. It's a great privilege to have the relics here, and we hope people will be able to go visit and say a prayer for their families for the sick of the diocese and for our priests and bishop and our religious. Tomorrow, the baptism course continues at 6.30 in the parish room. On Tuesday, it will be church cleaning because on Wednesday, it is the feast of the exaltation of the cross. So we will have exposition and rosary after the mass. Wednesday evening, there's a special Mass for the repose of the soul of Queen Elizabeth II at 7 o'clock. We hope people will try to come along to this Mass to pray in thanksgiving for the wonderful work that she did and leadership that she gave over the past 70 years. On Friday, the funeral of Augustine Louis will take place at the City of London Crematorium at 12.30. We pray for the repose of his soul. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. First communion applicants, we are still waiting for the letters from year three. If year three in St. Michael's or anywhere else, if there are eight years by the, 23rd, by the 31st of August next year, that you are entitled, the child is entitled to come on to the program to receive Holy Communion for the first time next May. There is a retiring collection for the Catholic education after the Mass, the Blue Bucket 
hope somebody will take the blue bucket and hold it there for us. And then also on the other side, that's this side of the church, the young people are there who did the sponsored walk yesterday around the churches of East Ham. And if anyone wants to give a, make a donation to that, you're most welcome. Last but not least, next week end, we will be having a retiring collection for Father Francis as a gift, a leaving gift for Father Francis. He will be leaving us the week of the 25th, the following week, Sunday, that week. He will be leaving us. He will be saying the Mass at 11, 30, at 11 o'clock on that morning and there will be a reception in the school and the, and the weather permitting in the schoolyard uh, grounds for us all to take the opportunity of saying thank you. Thank you for the seven years, over seven years, that he's given to the parish. He has worked extremely hard, not only because he had to do his doctorate, but he extremely hard in the parish. And many people have been helped by him. And it's an opportunity for all of us to show our appreciation for the tremendous support that is given to the parish. And most importantly, for the tremendous support is given to me, especially over the past six months. And I have been unable to do all the things I should have been doing. So we do thank him for this. He'll have an opportunity himself to say words, no doubt, the last weekend he's here at the Mass. But we do say a sincere thank you for all the tremendous, tremendous work he's done here. Not only in the parish, by the way, in the deanery. He's been doing a lot of activities. And we do, I know on behalf of the deanery, I say a big thank you to him for that. But I think if he thinks he's missing out on a deanery meeting, I think there's one, not this coming Thursday, but the following Thursday. And I'll have a gun ready to make sure he gets there. <laughs> so we do hopefully be as kind as you can be next week. And don't forget everybody the following week to say thank you to him. So we stand now for the... We just remember God's word. Never forget about God. Because God never forgets about you. Appreciate what you have and thank God for it. And pray for others. Intercede on behalf of others. Through that, you gain blessings and it brings transformation into the life of others. May God grant us that amazing grace that will be able to live in accordance with His will. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And have a blessed week. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, love the earth.